Hi, my name is Stuart Lowe and I am a Splunk Consultant and SOAR Certified Automation Developer here at Summerford Associates. And today I'm going to talk about building a playbook within Splunk SOAR using the Visual Playbook Editor. Playbooks represent the codification of a repeatable process, allowing you to automate time-consuming and repetitive tasks. A well-planned playbook should be easy to create and maintain, and can eliminate many of the false positives that take valuable analyst time. By navigating to the playbooks menu, we can see a list of pre-existing playbooks already available for automation. The majority of these are community playbooks, which we can identify from the repo column. These are playbooks that have been written by community members and are available for editing locally for use in your environment. Local playbooks are playbooks stored in a local repository. The labels column indicates labels associated with a playbook. When a playbook is activated, it will automatically run against sources of events that have been given the same label. An unactivated playbook will not run automatically, however it can be manually triggered by a user against an appropriate event at any time. We can find the visual playbook editor by selecting the plus playbook icon and then choosing automation. An automation playbook can be triggered automatically and can be called by another playbook. An input playbook on the other hand can only be called by another playbook. We can now see the visual playbook editor. Let's start with a simple phishing email investigation example. First, we drag out from the start block and select an action block. Note that each of the possible items we can select when dragging from the start block corresponds to items in the left hand menu. I want to determine if virus total has designated a URL as malicious. I'll select virus total. Then we select the URL reputation action. Next, configure the parameter that we want to use, which in this case is the request URL parameter. Now that we've looked up the URL, let's automatically feed the results of that action into a decision block. I want the decision block to analyze the number of positives from virus total and compare that to a threshold. Let's make it two for this example, but it could be any other threshold or value we deem appropriate to use as the threshold for maliciousness. The decision block can be extended to add multiple and or or else if options to the logic to handle other conditions. I'll show a more complicated example shortly. Now that we've analyzed the datum from virus total and determined that the URL is likely malicious, we can add the next step. In this case, I want to do another action using Zscaler for our app to use. And the specific action we want is the block URL action. We'll follow the menus and select the same URL used for the URL reputation action. We then connect this final action to the end block. There are several other items on the left hand menu which we have not used. The playbook block will call another playbook, which can be either an input or auto automation playbook. Next is a custom Python code block, which enables you to expand the kinds of processing performed in a playbook such as adding custom input parameters and output variables. Similarly, the utilities block allows access to a number of custom functions and to the SOAR API. The filter block allows you to apply similar logic used in the decision block to extract a subset of the data present in an event. And the format block allows you to create custom strings and messages from various objects within the scope of the playbook. So this is useful for things such as generating email content, uh, or producing a search string to use in a run query action using the Splunk app. Finally, we have the prompt block. This requires that a message is sent and responded to by a person. Okay, so we now go to settings and give the playbook a label, the email label, so that this playbook can run against all events with the email label. The other decision point is whether or not to make this playbook active, allowing it to trigger automatically. As this is an example, we'll not do this at this time and we're also required to give the playbook a name. The playbook is now complete and is ready for testing. We can do so using the visual playbook editor, playbook debugger, or we can go to our sources and select an event to run it against manually, a topic for a later video. By way of example, you can now see a substantially more complicated playbook. We can see multiple lines of action and the decision blocks have two outputs color coded according to their logic. We can also see a playbook being called delete phishing email. It is a good design practice to separate playbooks into logical functions, i.e. phishing investigate, phishing email delete, as it allows for a modular approach to playbook development. If you would like to know more about Splunk SOAR and how it can help improve your organization's efficiency, productivity and security posture, 
then please get in touch with us at info at Thank you for watching.